Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue on the CCMP based switched video series. First off, if you hear some loud banging in the background, I do apologise, it's Guy Fox here in the UK, which means that everyone's setting off fireworks. <laughs> so yeah, with that out of the road, let's kick on and do it. Today's class we're going to be doing on Loop Guard. Now Loop Guard is an STP enhancement feature and it's basically, you might be wondering actually, why would you have a loop enhancement feature for STP which is basically a loop prevention mechanism well it just is that it's a bit of extra security to prevent against loops um, so let's just discuss it then just before we do this so the topology as it stands right now we've got three switches here this is going to be the root bridge this will be our root port this one here will also be a root port this one's going to be designated and this one is going to be blocking, okay? So that's the basic layout. So what actually happens here? So remember, if you recall from one of my videos on STP, I kind of highlighted the point that when it comes to spanning tree converging, then what happens is the only switch, and again, really remember this, the only switch that actually is transmitting BPDUs is the root bridge, okay? So in this case here, the way something like, let's look at it from Switch 3's point of view, the way Switch 3 can detect that there is a potential for a loop in the system is because from the root bridge, okay, it's receiving a BPDU here on this interface and it's also getting the same BPDU relayed through Switch 2 on this interface. And Spanning Tree is intelligent enough to know and say, well, I'm receiving that BPDU here, and I'm receiving it here, therefore there's a chance of a loop, okay? That's the basic kind of functionality of it. So, what would happen if, say, this link goes down and we're no longer getting that transmission through here? Well, this is what happens. You get a max age uh, timer in spanning tree, and the max age is by default 20 seconds, and what it does is... It says, if I don't hear a BPDU for 20 seconds, I assume that uh, the link is effectively broken, thus the potential for a loop is broken, so I'll start transition to forward them. So, like I say, what that means, and let's say if we do this, just because we're getting the BPDUs down here, which is fine from the root bridge, this link goes down, we don't get the BPDUs here because the link's uh, blocked, so we don't get that really here. What happens is, the max age on switch 3, 20 seconds, eventually counts down all the way to 1 and then what happens is the switch makes a decision and says, hey, because I'm not receiving BPDUs in on this interface, there's no longer a loop. Something must have happened up here, so what I'll start doing is I'll start forwarding traffic, okay? And that would be fine, like I say, if this link is broken, there is no potential for a loop, all traffic can go here and terminate here, traffic can go here and terminate here, but it can't go round and loop round each other because this link is down. So that's all very well and fine. Now here's the thing, okay, there is times uh, when you can, you can actually induce um, a loop in this scenario even, if I, well do you know what, let's just keep it simple, let me just show you. Very often, well not rather, very often, <laughs> um, sometimes what can happen in a switch is you can get an actual a malfunctioning switch, okay? So let's just keep it from the same point of view. Root bridge is here, and we'll look at it from switch 3, because switch 3's got this blocking port at the moment. Let's say we have a malfunction in switch 2. Now what might happen is the actual iOS, the software based, um, the, the software in the Cisco switch might break. So basically what happens is, it stops transmitting BPDUs. Okay, so switch three now makes this assumption that its max age timer has now expired because it's not receiving these BPDUs anymore. So the switch says, hmm, I'm not receiving BPDUs. This link must be down. There mustn't be a loop and I'll start forwarding. Now, automatically you might think, okay, well that's fine because if the iOS breaks here, then this switch kind of is down. It's not sending BPDUs. Well, what can happen is that even though this switch is iOS is broken and it's not transmitting BPDUs, the actual hardware 
the ASICs, the application specific integrated circuits can still actually perform kind of um, just straight bridging. It's just, it's it's not very intelligent. It's not thinking the way of like spanning tree, but it's just going to get f data frames and relay them round and relay them round. But again, what's the problem here, okay? Is that this interface has stopped receiving BPDUs. The max age has expired. It now calculates that it should go into a forwarding state. We're forwarding here. This is not transmitting BPDUs, but it's still relaying round data frames. And now data frames can go round and round and round and round and round. And like I say, in layer 2, we don't have a time to live. So this can just keep going and keep going. And effectively, loop guard is designed to stop this very thing from happening. Now, the rule of loop guard, it's configured on a blocking interface, a non-designated port, which in this case is this interface here. And all it says, it's a simple rule, it says if you stop receiving BPDUs on this non-designated port, do not transition into forwarding. Don't transition into forwarding. Go into a state called loop inconsistent. Now loop inconsistent is very much like a root guard where it goes into root inconsistent in that it's kind of like a shutdown state effectively because it won't be accepting data frames. It won't be um, actively participating in the transmitting of data but it's also self-healing. It will perform automatic recovery such that if this switch somehow is rebooted and it starts transmitting BPDUs, it's going to say, oh, I'm now receiving BPDUs on this loop inconsistent port, therefore I will no longer be loop inconsistent, and I will just go back to being a non-designated port, and the topology has resumed itself effectively. Okay? So that is the basic theory about loop gather. There really isn't too much to it really it's just an additional um it's an additional protection against the possibility of loops even though span trees designed to prevent loops these little kind of things can happen and um this is just that additional protection so like i say the actual configuration is really quite simple so let's go and do it now if you recall like i say the topology is that on switch 3 here gigabit 01 is the blocked port Okay, oh. so I'll just configure it on this port. Okay, so I can do spanning tree, guard, loop. In fact, you know, before I even configure that, just so you can see it, because I like to show you just in case. You can see that this port gigabit 01 is in fact the blocked port at the moment, okay? So this is, gig 02 is the root port, this is root port, this is designated, and of course this is the root bridge, so both of these are designated. So I'm going to go into the blocked port, gig01, and like I say, what I'm saying is, if you stop receiving BPDUs on this port, do not transition to forward. Go into loop inconsistent stage, I don't want you to risk going forward. So this is all we're doing, so we're doing spanning tree guard loop, and that's that. Okay, so that's the basic premise. Now what I'm going to do to actually induce this... Um, uh, this loop inconsistent, I'm going to artificially induce it by going into the same interface which I'm in and I'm also going to do spanning tree BPDU, oh, BPDU filter enable. So what I'm effectively doing is filtering the BPDUs which is kind of like acting like I'm not receiving them. So switch 2 will be sending the BPDUs but switch 3 is going to not accept them, I'm going to filter them which is actually going to trigger the um, loop guard. So this is, just, this is just a test feature, obviously this is not the way you want to implement loop guard, this is just to test the actual um, thing. So what's going to happen is, after about 20 seconds that we've configured this spanning tree, where it would ordinarily go into a forwarding state because it's not receiving these BPDUs on this interface, is actually going to go into loop inconsistent. There you see it there. So we do a show span, and now we're in loop inconsistent. So the link is no longer forwarding, even though it stopped receiving BPDUs on this interface because they've been filtered, obviously. Ordinarily, it would start forwarding frames. In this case, it's been a, a loop inconsistent. And because of that, I'll just show you it. There we go. So loop inconsistent. And like I say, just to show you the automatic self uh, healing properties, 
if we do a int gig zero one and do spanning tree bpdu oh, filter disable we'll start receiving bpdus again and it'll realize let's go back out of loop inconsistent and just go back to an ordinary state so show span and now it just went back to regular blocking state because the topology has resumed itself and that's pretty much it so like I say, the main thing to remember is it's an additional protection against uh, loops, especially in the case of if an iOS fails, but the ASICs are still forward in data frames, even though th because the iOS is down, the switch is not sending BPDUs. So this switch 3 doesn't get erroneous information, thinking that perhaps like this link up here is broken and we can forward this traffic from here and inadvertently bring a loop into our topology. And loop guard just gives you that additional protection against it. And like I say, just like root, incons uh, root guard, loop inconsistent is like root inconsistent in that it will effectively self-heal itself upon the normal, uh, once a topology, once the normal topology resumes itself. And that's it. So that's the end of the video. The next one I'm going to be doing is on UDLD. And it's pretty similar in what it does. It's just it's rather than be a spanning tree feature, it is based on uh, physical uh, media particularly optical and that'll be the next video so thanks for watching this one and i'll see you guys soon bye bye